Welcome to the Roots Revival with Food Prude, where we're going back to our roots and learning old-fashioned ways in a modern world. Hi, I'm Laura Lawrence, and I'm glad you're here with me. Hey guys, welcome to Food Prude's homestead here in northern Michigan. Um, I wasn't going to do a bean video this year because I have a lot of them already, but I've had so many new subscribers and new people here supporting me, which, which I am very, very thankful for. It's really exciting to see people engaging and watching the videos and you know, seeing what I'm doing and stuff like that as I'm throwing beans around. So I had to do a bean video though this year. It just came to me because I was in my back garden, or my front garden, I'm sorry, and I forgot that I planted these um, dragon tongue beans. And I was like, okay, I've got to do a video. And I'm going to do it back here in the famous purple potted pole bean hoop house thingy that I have here that I absolutely love. And it is famous because these purple potted pole beans and these hoop houses are getting spread all over northern Michigan. I learned it from a friend. I did it with the purple beans that are awesome. So I'm able to seed save from them and then um, gift them to people. And they're doing that in their garden and just seeing the happiness of them growing something um, like beans. It's just, it's just been, it's been great. So thanks for being here. Appreciate you. I want to talk about beans because they're more than just the musical fruit that makes you, you're welcome for that one. They are amazing, 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 because what they're doing is, oh, unlike a lot of the other stuff, um, like your broccoli and your tomatoes and stuff like that, those are called heavy feeders. They are continually taking stuff from the soil and they don't really put anything back in. Beans, on the other hand, are putting nitrogen into the ground and fixing that because all the plants need nitrogen to grow. But for some odd reason, God designed these different and they put nitrogen into the ground and they're able to grow in really crappy areas. Hence what I'm in right now, actually. This is a, feels like a desert. It's very hard clay. It has those cracks and stuff like that. I purposely chose this area this year. I moved it from a little bit over there that had a little bit better um, soil. I moved it over here because I wanted to actually fix the soil. So that's a really cool thing, right? So it's fixing the soil, hopefully, you know, putting that stuff, nutrients back into the ground and help breaking up this really clay hard area that I'll be able to utilize for other stuff. So this year it's like this right here and then I'll flip it and then fix that little bit over there and I'll put something here and kind of keep going. Um, so I took a gamble on that because I'm completely out of beans and I need the beans this year. I like to have at least a year's worth of beans on hand, if not going into that second year, in case something happens, weather or sickness or something like that. So I took a gamble to put them over here, but um, I, I, that was my goal, was still to get beans and to help break up this very harsh, uh, hard clay soil over here. So, and it's working. It's not, it's not as best as, or there's not as like fruitful as it would be if there was best conditions for them but I'm still gonna get plenty. I have lots of blooms. I picked a bowl today. I'm really excited about that because I'm like, finally they're here, yay! It's like when the beans finally get here, like, I don't know, just very happy about that. And, I, and, and this year particular, they are, uh, I feel like everything's much later. We've had a really rough rough year this with the, with the weather and stuff like that. So it's kind of a, so whatever I'm getting, I'm very thankful for. But so back to the beans, because the beans are amazing. So. They are fixing the soil. They're giving me food to provide for my family that I can um, in my um, All-American Pressure canner. It cans up 14 quarts at a time because I'm like, just get her done. Go big or go home for me. Um, and so that's what I like to do because we like to raise a majority of our own food, like 80, 85% of our own food, all of our meat, all of our veggies, and starting uh, working on a lot of the fruit by doing fruit trees and bushes and blueberries and stuff like that. So it's really important that we control can control where and how the food is coming from because frankly our food system's broken right and my whole thing is freedom and food and we need that and the beans are a great way to start because they grow really easy and they grow pretty prolific on many different varieties even a bush bush bean these are a pole bean the more space i give them the more i'm going to get from each seed um, so that's why i really like pole beans all my dry beans are bush beans um, I really like the beans. <laughs> I like the beans. Um, so if you're thinking maybe you don't like the beans or you got some picky eaters, <clears throat> my husband, um, yeah, that happens. So I have to make them, you know, like a, t <laughs> yes, I may. You got to have a little bit, buddy. Um, but make sure you can them with salt. One year I forgot to can them with salt, and boy, there was a huge difference. 
The salt does nothing for helping preserve them, um, but it helps with the flavor big time. So make sure you put that half a teaspoon or teaspoon of salt in with your beans when you're canning them. So that's a little tip there. And then also a great thing about beans is that they're, they're a great thing you can give to your kids to grow too. I give them a little bit of fencing somewhere and they just plant the beans and they come out here and snack on them fresh. Fresh is best. They're getting just amazing nutrients that way, right? And all your kids can do that. You can do that as well. Um, so it's a, that's a, a very positive thing. Or somebody who's on the fence about gardening or I don't want to do a lot of space or anything like that. Just grow some beans. Use anything that you have around for them to uh, grow on or do some bush beans. The great thing about pole beans, especially with a hoop house like this, is that I don't have to bend over and I can just come in here and pick, pick them off super easy. Um, so that's also a, like a mobility issue, I guess, or whatever. I'm not sure. But if you got some on the lower, you can um, let the little kids do that. And then an another great thing about beans is that once you buy that one packet of whatever beans that you like, I like the purple uh, powdered pole beans and the dragon tongue beans. They're stringless and they're just, they taste really good and they grow really good. I like to pick them when they're about six to eight inches long. That seems to be like their tender sweet spot that I like the best. Um, so once you buy that, one, that packet that one time for a couple bucks or whatever it is, make sure they're an heirloom variety, please. I use Baker Creek at rareseeds.com where I buy most of mine. I have bought some from MI Gardener that I'm starting to do this year, but I don't have a full eval on them yet. Um, but I'm excited because they're in Michigan, so it's kind of nice. But anyways, back to it. So you buy that one thing, then you learn how to seed save. And beans are the easiest to seed save from because they have a really hard time cross-pollinating. And I'm not saying that they can't. But um, they have a really, they, they just tend to not want to cross pollinate. So you're going to still get your t that type of bean year after year after year after year. And how you seed save from your beans is you simply just let them go on the vine for as long as possible, which is calling making sure that they're super mature. They're going to get pretty long. They're going to get really fat. They're going to start to change color and stuff like that. And eventually they will turn brown. So you want to leave them on the vine for as long as possible and then if it's getting too cold or you're just going to forget about them or you, it's getting too rainy, you don't want them to go get too moldy, you're going to go ahead and just pick them and then you're going to put them in a nice dry spot to dry out. You can leave them in the pod until next year and break them open and plant them where you want or you can go ahead and just make sure that they're extra dry, I mean make sure, because that's the most important thing is making sure that they're dry. Um, and then you just pop them out, let them dry for as long as possible. And then once you know they're for sure dry, you, you can take your fingernail by denting in the bean itself. If it dents, it's not dry enough. If it doesn't dent, go ahead and pop those in a glass container, put a lid on it, label it, and then plant them next year. And then when you go to plant them next year, don't plant all, all those from that one jar. Save a little bit out, whatever amount you think it is good, save a little bit out. And for each consecutive year that you do that, just in case if there was a cross-pollinating thing, that's just like a good tip to get into a habit of any type of seed saving so that you don't, so that you can go back a couple years if, um, you know, something does cross-pollinate or something doesn't work out or like you used all your seeds up because you forgot to and then you have to buy that packet again or whatever. So um, that's a, so beans, definitely learn how to seed save. Just follow those simple tricks of letting them dry out, mature, dry out, save them in a glass, them next year. So what are your favorite types of beans that you like to grow? I do a lot of dry beans and then again for the fresh beans I do the purple potted pole beans and the dragon tongues that are good and I like to let them just fix the soil places and even if you weren't going to eat them but you have some soil that's you know like kind of crappy like this very clayey stuff that I'm stepping on right now um, just go ahead and plant them and then let them um, know just do their whole thing and die out and whatever and feed it to the, your animals or you know pick them and give them to your neighbors I mean someone's gotta like them right so I hope you enjoyed today's video um, yeah I love my beans so let me know your favorites down below what you have uh, planted before what's worked out for you what you found tasty or what you've done with them did you did you do dilly beans did you pickle them did you can them what'd you do so help us out help the community community out and I appreciate you being here and thank you again. If you're interested in learning about, more about seed saving or fermenting or gardening, if you go to shop.foodprude.com you'll see all my different courses. 
um, with the seed saving course there's videos and a workbook that goes through every type of seed saving of everything that I've done here in the homestead and it's a great way to support me and the channel and I appreciate you so if you're interested go to shop.foodfood.com thanks guys